Cherokee Nation citizen Brad Carson has dedicated his life to serving his community, the state of Oklahoma, and the federal government. Now, as the 21st president of the University of Tulsa, he's brought his leadership skills home with renewed focus. The leader has to establish a vision. You know, that's what separates a leader from a manager. My name is Brad Carson, and I'm the president of the University of Tulsa. I often tell people, I pay others to let me do this job. I, mean, I find being president of the university fun. I find being in Congress fun. I really feel really lucky, though, that for most of these jobs that we've talked about, work and play were the same thing. You know, that I got paid for it was a remarkable thing. And so for me, my work has often been my hobby, it's what I do. I said it was just fun for me. I said that's a, a rare thing. So like a lot of Cherokees, it's your ancestral home that really matters. My father is a Carson. The Carsons have a lot of businesses in the town of Stillwell. My father was a rancher by vocation. So he actually became an agricultural extension agent for the Bureau of Indian Affairs out on the Navajo Reservation. So I was born on the Navajo, as was my brother. My parents spent a long time out there before moving to the Eastern Band of the Cherokee, also with the BIA. So he moved around a lot from kind of reservation to reservation. Until I was 15, he retired, and we came back to Tulsa, where I graduated from Jinx High School. Definitely growing up with my father working for the BIA had a profound influence on me because I saw a part of the country that most people hear about but never visit themselves. And when you grow up in these kind of small towns, reservation towns like we did, you could see how much the government played a role in people's lives. And good government could help, bad government could really hurt. So I was always a kid who wanted to be interested in politics. My parents believed it was the highest calling. They actually said there are only three vocations worth pursuing, preacher, teacher, or politician. I worked on campaigns when I was a teenager. In my 20s, I licked envelopes and knocked doors, put up yard signs, until the day came when I turned 30 that I decided I'd run myself for office. And so I was a politician. What was then the second district of Oklahoma, you're representing the most Native American congressional district in the nation. You have a lot of responsibility and a lot of expectation for you. You know, it's not just the laws or policies I pushed. I can still meet people today, 20 years after I was first elected, whose lives I helped in some small way. It means a lot, and that's what politics can do. It is politics may not be able to save the world, but it can contribute to saving the world in some way. My mother so strongly identified with being Cherokee, and this was like the key aspect of who she was growing up in Piney, this meant a lot. It explained her politics, explained her views of the world. It's probably the one key aspect of our identity that you know, has been a thread for everyone. And after I got out of Congress, I joined the faculty at the University of Tulsa. And I now still teach here at the University of Tulsa three classes because you have the chance to directly interact with people who um, you can shape them in some way. I myself get smarter from the interaction that I have with these like really brilliant young people. <laughs> this is, this is Connor. Hi, Connor. This is Mrs. Carson. So my job is going around the university saying, like, why don't we have more Native students here? What groups can we reach out to? How can we make the university affordable if it's not to some? How can we provide housing if students are coming in with unique needs? How do we meet them? Like, how do we get them up to speed? Things like special scholarships for Native Americans. So across the university, we think that we should be a center for Native American intellectual life, whether that's Native American literature, anthropology, law, as well as a place where any Native American student who wants to come to the University of Tulsa, right, we make that available to them. You know, there's a lot of great TU traditions. Um, the most fun thing is having all these alumni come back from across the country, um, people who really love the university. This university made a huge difference in their life. And you get to hear those stories. And to me, that's the reason you do this. It's like someday the students that I teach, 30 years from now, will be those distinguished alumni. And I want them to say like, yeah, you know, President Carson made an impact on my life. This university made an impact on my life. I light the bonfire, yes. Thanks for coming out again, you guys. Oh, we're glad to be here. The distinguished alumni, we all light the bonfire together. So we have a great bonfire right out here on the commons and it's one of the kind of signature events of our homecoming. So the president is always there helping light that. I want to be remembered for having dedicated my life to the betterment of Oklahoma. Growing up here, the idea that 
I didn't choose Oklahoma, Oklahoma chose me, and that my goal was to try to improve it. And that's what I've tried to do, whether it's in politics, whether it's teaching, whether it's university president. I want to make an impact on the world. So I hope people think that whatever I've done, I tried, I had an impact on making life better here.